What's up guys? We are back with another premium DNA review and we are taking a look at the first release out of what is their, I mean, I'm assuming, you know, overwhelmingly, but arguably their most anticipated license so far. We're taking a look at the first release out of the Battletoads line. Now this was a Toy-Con New Jersey exclusive. It's a repaint of Zitz that's coming in the mainline Wave 1. This is the NES color version of that figure. Now for this particular release, and I say this because I don't actually know what the boxes look like for Wave 1, we get an NES slipcover that says Toy-Con NJ on it, and then you can take that off, and you've got your box within, which on the front gives you a shot of the old NES cartridge with that original Battletoads artwork. You've got the name on one spine with some more NJ uh, Toy-Con callouts. You've got product shot on the other spine, and then the back of the box gives you a cross-sell for the mainline Wave 1, but this also has a flap that has the uh, like the player select screen on the inside showcasing that it is zits in there and then you've got a window here uh, that you can actually use to see the figure itself i really really like this packaging i mean right out of the gate the box and just the theme here obviously some nostalgia callbacks tugging on the heartstrings there for sure but i'm really excited about this not only because it comes in a cool box and there's a lot of nostalgia here for me with this property this game but i have been dying to get my hands on this line so let's do it let's pull them out and take a look and here we go, out of the package are Battletoads Zits from Premium DNA. Again, this is the Toy-Con New Jersey exclusive, which is essentially just a repaint with less accessories from what we're getting in Wave 1. Like I said, kind of a way to whet your appetite, give you an idea of what's coming, you know, a, an early look at what's coming before we get inundated with a whole mess of really weird Battletoads figures. So let's see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. By all accounts, the Toads might be the normal figures in this line so he does kind of move about how you would expect for a figure like this but at the same time this is it's different stuff for premium dna this isn't a mad ball this isn't a barnyard commando so we got a head that can look up a little bit he can look down slightly you've got tilt side to side but he has really wide head face and then you've got the situation where he's sort of like a hunchback kind of thing so the head is on the neck obviously but the neck is pointing this way and as a result when you when you rotate you have to sort of watch what you're doing because it'll go really weird really quick this is just on a ball peg by the way you got arms that go out at the shoulder they of course swivel you've got a bicep swivel there we've got double jointed elbows you get better than 90 but you, you we could get better range if it wasn't for this big cuff right here he hits his bicep uh, pretty quick, but we've still got pinless double jointed elbows and it looks really good. You've got hinges, you've got rotation at your wrist. The torso is a diaphragm cut, so it's a swivel. And then you've got tilt side to side, really, really nice. Forward and backward isn't as good, but it's still pretty decent to get him, like, you know, if you want him looking straight down, that works pretty nicely. Legs go out all the way, they kick forward all the way. Uh, this is also a drop down joint. So you can pop those legs down if you need to raise them up a little bit. We've got double jointed knees as well. These aren't nearly as encumbered as the arms, a little bit, but they aren't too bad. They get pretty good range there. And then you've got rocker, really, really good rocker, and hinges down at those ankles. Nothing getting in the way there on those big old feet. So in many ways, he, he moves about as well as you would expect. There's really nothing too crazy about how he's put together. The only real oddity about this figure in terms of articulation is that head, and that's just because it's a big wide head that is lurching forward. Otherwise, I think he moves really well. What truly matters here, though, is is the look and just the, and the feel. More so the feel. Like There is definitely something about being able to have the figure in hand that changes one's perception sometimes. This is a really solid figure, and that is an important word here. This is a really, really solid figure. He's hefty, joints are tight, but not too tight, and everything about him just feels good. Like, this is a really fluid, solid, nicely put together, nice feeling figure, and it definitely makes me a little bit more excited about the rest of this line, because there are some enormous figures coming uh, that could, of course, you know, pose some problems when it comes to just being a figure. Zitz looks really rad. I'm really happy with the way he turned out. I like this green. He's, he's molded in the green, and then you've got the yellow and the, you know, the frog spotting uh, all over him, painted on top. And everything is really, really clean. I, I can't stress that enough here. All of this paint 
is really clean. There's no fuzzy lines or any bleeding or anything like that. Uh, everything here looks really solid, very crisp, very clean. The details on the wrist, like the little communicator thing, there's not a lot there. And the gauntlets do have some paint around the ribbing here. No pun intended there either, I guess. Uh, you've got a little bit of paint and that's really clean and crisp as well. What I really like about this guy is the size and we'll, do, we'll have to do comparisons, obviously and proportions because the battle toads were always like super super top heavy and he is that way he's not top heavy in the sense that he's got a balance problem but he is super beefy up top and then he's got some kind of scrawny frog legs down there on the bottom which work really well it gives them a very unique profile but they're still super beefy and muscular overall we've got of course some really big oversized feet you've got your knee pads these are actually separate pieces that sit over top of the joint so it's pretty cool there they did not sacrifice range really by having that i mean the range there is still really good because it's kind of a flexible plastic so it will sort of scrunch up and get out of its own way but i'm really happy to see that and then you've got your head sculpt up here which you know is insane looking and pretty crazed as to be expected from a battle toads but he's got this just ridiculous expression everything about this you know is like a 90s looking thing bright vibrant goofy colors on a really weird idea and then this just ridiculous expression up here but all of that yellow and the pink and the white for the teeth he's got kind of an asymmetrical thing going on with the eyes one eyebrow is kind of raised higher than the other you've got one eye that's slightly open more than the other so he looks he looks about as ridiculous as the concept of battle toads is which is to say that he looks pretty damn good i'm really happy with the way he turned out size is really well proportions are good sculpt is nice and again the paint this across the figure, top to bottom, super, super clean. Now, as far as some size comparisons, we have to start with other premium DNA stuff. So we got a Mad Ball and we've got a Barnyard Commando over here. And they kind of size up a little better than I thought they would. These things are huge. And he's also really, really big. Of course, these guys make up for a lot of their size when it comes to bulk and overall beefiness. And then, of course, our Barnyard Commando figures are... Well, they're oddly proportioned because they are farm animals, so they don't really stack up in any way, and they certainly aren't going to scale, but they're kind of all in the same arena as far as Zitz goes. Now, once we get the rest of Wave 1, things are absolutely going to change, but Zitz is going to fit in pretty nicely with a lot of 7-ish inch stuff, so let's kind of start there. So let's move this guy aside, and let's do a, a Super 7 Turtle. There's Leo, which I'm very happy to see that. Let's pull Hornhead aside and let's do a Legion figure. Here's a 1.0 figure. There's Atlas. So you can see that these guys, well, at least the, the Toads anyway, are not super, super tall, but he's a big, he's kind of a chunky figure in many ways. Maybe that's a good way to describe him. And let's take Atlas aside. Let's do a different turtle. Let's do a, a NECA turtle. So here's a Toon turtle. And let's move Super 7 Leo aside. Let's do a Masterverse figure. Here is Faker. And he looks huge by comparison. And then, of course, let's do a Hasbro figure. Let's do, let's do a Cobra Bat, because why not? And then one more. Let's do a Figure Arts. Here is Dragon Ball Z Turtles. So Zitz isn't the tallest figure by any means, but he is. He's odd proportions, and he's he's bulky on top. So he definitely has this weird sort of top heavy kind of thing where he's super super big up top and really bulky and girthy but then he's sort of normal down below and in many ways just feels like kind of a chunky figure but not necessarily something that is enormous now when it comes to accessories this is again and i've kind of mentioned this already this is where things are dialed back a little bit for this figure and in some ways i'm okay with it some ways i would have rather not had just a handful of accessories but the price point on this figure at the convention was less than the normal price for this figure's regular release so you are getting a break if you bought him at the convention all he comes with is some extra hands uh, so he's got fists on him in the box you get a set of uh, gripping hands and again you know nothing to grip unless you've got other stuff you want to give him and then you've got a set of wide gripping hands as well which of course can be used for like grappling or you know gesturing style posey kind of stuff the retail figure is going to have other accessories also uh he's got one of the, like when they turn into like you know rams and barricades and things like that when they're arms he has things like that he's got a big drill arm as well so he has some really big accessories that are also coming kind of reminiscent of what they did with barnyard commandos with those figures having just huge huge stuff so you don't get a lot with this figure you know you just get four extra hands but you are getting at least like a 10 or 15 ish dollar price break at the convention 
uh, having gotten this version versus the retail. So it's not the same situation, not the same price. I do kind of like the idea of knocking the price down a little bit when the figure does in fact come with less. So yeah, overall, I mean, I'm really happy with this thing. I think it's awesome. I think it's a lot of fun. Looks great pretty much from start to finish. I love the paint. I love the sculpt. I love the sizing. I like the proportions on the figure. He moves really well. And again, I, I can't stress enough, it's a really solid feeling action figure. Nothing is loose. Nothing is moving any way that it shouldn't. Everything feels nicely put together here. And that goes all the way back to the box, honestly. From presentation at the box level to the finished product, I am incredibly happy with the way this guy turned out. And if he is any indication of what this line is going to be like, I cannot wait to see the full Wave 1 assortment when they finally hit. So that's going to do it for this look at the Premium DNA Toycon New Jersey exclusive Zits. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.